Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to a very short lore week. I don't have much to talk about today. Despite the fact that we haven't done a lore week in two weeks, not much has happened. Not much lo news, lose? News to talk about. I'm not sure where that L came from. Ah, it just came from over there. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, guys. Um, before we really get going, um, I was actually asked to talk about how much April Fool sucks. Um, if I might be so bold, I think as with basically everything in human existence, April Fools does not suck. It is the way certain people who abuse the, the April Fools that sucks. You know, just like everything else, right? We actually had a discussion while we were playing FF6 yesterday about, you know, Hammer. Uh, I didn't actually jump in. It was between Fallout Bear and uh, Psychotic, I want to say. But anyways, they were talking about how, you know, magic, it would be horrible if magic was in the real world. Um... And the, the counter-argument was that, well, hammers are in the real world. Because, see, a hammer can be used for you know, hammering in stuff, or pulling out nails, or working on things, or beating someone to death, right? And I know that sounds horribly morbid. But the point being made is that it is the people who use it to bludgeon people to death that is the problem, not the hammer. At least that's the opinion. Um, <clears throat> wow, really, Velvetrix? That's ridiculous. Anyways, um, how does this relate to April Fool's? Well, um, most April Fool's things, I'm like, yeah, okay. And occasionally I get a chuckle out of it. You know, Google's thing was chuckle-worthy, even though it makes me sad how much money Google burned on that. But, you know, whatever. Whatever. You know, the Google's thing gave, got a chuckle out of me. Um, I usually like Blizzard stuff. Uh, the StarCraft II thing made me laugh. And I loved the patch notes. Uh, whoops, did I not change? Oh, God, I didn't change the... Uh, the thing. God, I am really tired. I actually only woke up like 30 minutes ago, which is really, really, really late for me. <laughs> I had, I was having a hell of a time sleeping last night. Non-stop nightmares. I'm not even joking. It was weird. Uh, lower week. What is, what is this month? April? There we go. Ugh. Um. <clears throat> Anyways, but my point is that uh, yeah, go ahead, Hourglass. None of the most, for the most part, the hour, the the April Fool stuff doesn't really bother me. It's the things that where they do things that I really wish were real, and it's like, oh, that's just an April Fool's, and they put real effort into making it look like it could be real. In fact, I've got an example from yesterday for you. They, uh, I hope Takoida is listening on this because they showcased the possibility of a FF14 done in the style of Tactics Ogre. And it looked really awesome, actually. And then, of course, that's an April Fool, so we're never going to get anything of like that. Anyone remember when they did that Zelda live-action movie release? This was several years ago. But it actually looked out pretty good. Or it looked like it was going to be pretty good, and it looked like it could be actually a really enjoyable film. And they're never, of course, going to make it, because it was just something they threw together for an April Fool's thing. <sighs> hey, something classic. Hope, uh, how far in are you? Out of curiosity. I mean, that's the kind of thing... Well, I mean, there's two kind of things, actually, that bother me about April Fool's. That's the first. When it's something that comes out and is like, Oh, that would be awesome if it was real. The second thing that would really uh, that that really pisses me off is the actively malicious stuff. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to name any specific examples because some people might disagree with me on this, but let's just say that uh, there are several circumstances during which awesome something classic. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, there's 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 several circumstances. Let me just call out, uh, I'm not going to say the name of the game, but there's a game, which is a PvP game, in which during the April Fools, one side would randomly basically get like five times the gold or experience or power of the other team. So it's suddenly tilted like this. That's not funny. That's just being mean at that point. And that's just, just a, a recent example. There are plenty of other examples of actively mean April Fool's jokes that people have done that I don't really care for. My personal favorite type of April Fool's 
is when something is presented on April Fool's and then it's actually real, like what Darkrai just referenced, or what I was doing yesterday. Granted, I wasn't actually really trying for an April Fool's at all. Um, <clears throat> I was just... It, I'd been wanting to do the, the per Keeping Perspective stream for forever, and April Fool's just felt like a good time to start doing that. Uh... <laughs> Be thankful. Some of the other things I could have done would have been probably less enjoyable. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with Tidus from FF10. Anyways, why don't we go ahead and start hitting the news. Uh, so, I actually don't... Like I said, I don't actually have a lot to talk about this year. Uh, or this week, I should say. They're making a new Matrix film. All of the, uh, the, the movement. I thought I already answered you, Hourglass. No. At least I didn't say anything about that. Uh, sorry, I thought I already answered you. Um, they make a new Matrix film, and we don't know virtually anything about it other than the fact that they're making a new Matrix film. Uh, so you can make of that whatever the hell you want. This is not on random. Well, thank you, Elias. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing more FF6 stuff tomorrow, by the way, for anybody who cares. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so the only reason I bring this up, I mean, it's kind of news that they're making a new Matrix film. Uh, no, not the Wachowskis, to make that clear. I should be clear. Warner Brothers is in the works and has been moving money around and rights around in order to make a new Matrix film. Now, I'm about to say something very unpopular, so please feel free to hate me. <clears throat> I don't like the Wachowski brothers. Uh, I don't think they actually do good stuff. Just my opinion. Um, as anybody who has done you know any in-depth behind-the-scenes look will tell you, the Matrix One was not really the Wachowskis' idea. Matrix Two and Three were the Wachowskis. Um, Speedrunner was the Wachowskis. Jupiter Ascendant was the Wachowskis. And when I look at that kind of stuff, I mean, not, not what I'd call a huge fan, to be completely honest. Even though I actually do defend Matrix Two. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, Wachowski sisters, I actually, I legitimately forgot, sorry, that's my bad, um, so the Wachowski sisters, uh, yeah, Cloud Atlas, that's another one, I'm, I'm just not a fan of their work, uh, so, I would actually rather a new Matrix film not be done by them, just my personal opinion on that, uh, Keanu Reeves has flat out said he'd be okay with being brought back into the project, Yes, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant Speed Racer. Wow, I am really out of it. I forgot to take my naproxen sodium, too. I've been having a headache all morning. <sighs> it's just naproxen sodium. It's nothing big. Anyways, here's the other big bit, bit of news here. Excuse me. Um, it is not going to... If, if It's not 100% locked in yet, but... um. The uh, the intent, assuming everything works as it is currently processed, is to make the new Matrix film not a reboot and not a remake. In other words, it's another Matrix film set within the current existing you know, mythos and canon of, of the Matrix films. Now, I point this out because this is the third movie within this year that I've seen that's kind of doing that. That's pretty much flat out using as part of a marketing point, no, we're not a remake. No, we're not a reboot. Uh, the other two are the Blade Runner and the new Alien film that are coming out. And uh, it's been something that makes sense to me. It, it's Pendulum Effect in, in full form because there's been so many... Hey, one Reboots and... Hey, hates Disney. There's been so many reboots and remakes and rebooting the reboots and remaking the reboots for the last like decade or so that it's logical that people that you know the people have just started looking at the concept of that and being like Bleh, just on the face of it and yeah as as Jolute, Joluotu uh, says right there the words are tainted at this point it's like the word DLC you know I've said this before and I'll say this again there's nothing actually wrong with DLC but DLC was so abused that it became a bad word, and people were automatically against DLC because it had been so adamantly abused, you know? So it makes sense to me that movies, uh, and I predict this will continue in the future, we'll see if I'm right or not, we'll start moving away from the reboot-remake thing, still going back to old IPs, 
just like Blade Runner and just like Alien, but trying to continue or have another story within the same mythos, you know, that kind of a thing instead. I don't know if that's better or not. I suppose we'll see. It's just interesting. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about very briefly is StarCraft Remaster. I'm only talking about this because, you know, I've been asked about it a lot. I've actually already given my thoughts on it, but that was during an Andromeda stream. So, to give my thoughts on StarCraft Remastered during a lore week, no, I'm not super excited about it. But I do want to talk about this, because there is there is a topic here. Uh, and it is something that I don't want to just summarize. The, re the biggest reason why I am not excited about the StarCraft Remaster is because it's a remaster. Now, let me go ahead and say props to Blizzard for labeling the thing properly. I know that, that I shouldn't even say that. It's like saying props to someone for, you know advertising milk when they're actually selling milk. But that's kind of what it is. So many companies, uh, when it comes to movies and games especially, most mostly games, have been marketing things as remakes when they're not. You know, HD remake. It's That's not a remake. You are literally lying at that point. And that has driven me crazy for years. So, uh, a remaster, which is basically the exact same game, just touched up with better graphics, that that's what a remaster means. I'm with that. They are remastering StarCraft 1, and they're calling it the StarCraft Remaster. So, yay for, for proper for proper English and for proper uh, usage of honesty. <sighs> However, I'm still not particularly interested in it. Um, I might spend, like, if it's 15 bucks, I might uh, go for it. It's probably not going to be that cheap, though, so I'm probably not going to pick it up. Uh... I actually haven't, Deacon. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, now, don't mistake me. I'm a big fan of StarCraft. And Lord knows I have to... I, I literally have a separate program, a shell program, designed just for StarCraft to be able to play StarCraft on my modern machine, as I'm sure most people do. Um, so, I mean, having a, a port, which this effectively is, is nice. But... It's just a remaster. And here, here's the real catch. Let me let me just go ahead and actually add one other thing here before I answer Zawan's question. The problem is, a, them putting out a remaster drastically lowers the chances of them putting out a remake, which is what I wanted. I have wanted a proper remake for many games for many years, and in my honest opinion, they Blizzard is in a perfect position to do a proper remake of Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, StarCraft, and StarCraft Brood War right now, because they have the engine. The StarCraft 2 engine is some of the most modular, dynamic, it's one of the most beautiful engines I've ever seen. There's so much you can do with that. All the, at all. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't be dismissive. But th my point is, they have the engine ready to go. They would have to rebuild Warcraft 1 from ground up in the StarCraft 2 engine. They would have to rebuild StarCraft from the ground up in the StarCraft 2 engine. But they could do that and put the time into it and put the effort into it. And that would be awesome if they did that. And I would buy that full price. But they're not doing that. What they're doing is they are releasing this... It's it's StarCraft. It's just StarCraft. The only things that are different is it'll be built for modern engines, so you won't need to use like a separate shell program to get it to run at all on Windows 7 or Windows 10. And uh, it'll have higher definition textures and 4K support, and you'll be able to zoom the camera out. And that's actually it. That's that's what it is. It is a remaster in every sense of the word. It looks like a good remaster, if I'm being honest, but it is still a remaster. And it means we'll probably never get the remake that I actually want. Uh, this is also, if you remember, I actually mentioned this in a previous Lore Week uh, about Warcraft 1, how they flat out said, we know what a Warcraft, we know what war a Warcraft proper remake would involve, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> so. So how much would I pay for a proper remake of Warcraft 2? Let me think about that. Okay. Assuming you used the term proper remake, which therefore means by my de definitions a proper remake, which is effectively a brand new game, which uh, I don't know if I'd be willing to pay $60 for a proper remake of Warcraft 2, but I'd be, I'd be willing to pay at least $40 for a proper remake of Warcraft 2, especially if it includes the expansion. So there's my answer to that.
I, I'd be I'd be willing to could be convinced with fifty, and I could probably talk myself into sixty. But forty is what I would default answer to that. <sighs> now I, I I actually already knew that Deacon. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why they're going ahead and doing a remaster and going out of it, it, one of the biggest marketing tags they've said about StarCraft Remaster is we're leaving the gameplay completely alone. All the ups and all the downs of the original StarCraft are being left exactly as is because StarCraft is still to this day. Uh, being played competitively, and I imagine this is something they're doing to try and encourage more competitive play of the original StarCraft and Brood War. I get it. It's it's basically a, a market that I am not, you know what I mean? It is, it is not designed for me uh, as a consumer. So, <sighs> shrug, we'll see. It's still interesting that they did that. It's been rumored since, like, last frickin' November that they were going to do that. Uh, I, I really don't have anything else to say about that. Um, like I said, Carlos, I could be talked into paying $60 for a proper remake. Emphasis on that proper word of Warcraft 1 or Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3 or Diablo or Diablo 2 or Starcraft and Brood War. I, I could be talked into that. It wouldn't take much. I know the one you're talking about, Deacon, the, the restoration mod. Um, admittedly, if I can... Before I actually go ahead, let me adjust my timestamps here. Yeah, I would also pay full price for a proper remake of Morrowind. Or Fallout 1. Or Fallout 2. You know, I, there's a big list. Um, before I move on to the next topic, I want to say one other thing. One of the reasons I want a proper remake is because most of these games... I mean, obviously, it's kind of a pain and a hassle to go back and play these older games, you know. Uh, a Diablo lore run has been discussed, and one of the things that's been mentioned is, would I play for Di through Diablo 1 again? And I kind of would, but I'm not really interested in doing so, because Diablo 1 hasn't aged particularly well, right? You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, it hasn't. It's still... Fireball, you know, <laughs> hasn't aged super well, and um, so that's that's half of my reason for wanting a proper remix, so I could go back and re-enjoy a thing. Some people argue that's nostalgia, and maybe that is nostalgia for other people, but I hate to say this, it's not actually nostalgia for me. It's the fact that I don't get bored of the same things if I enjoy them. I've said this before, and I've said this again. I, I consider myself blessed in the fact that I don't get bored replaying a game. I don't get bored re-watching a movie. I, when I went through the Lord of the Rings trilogy again for the ruminations that are going live, I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time I saw it, and the fifth time I saw it, and the twentieth time I saw it. I, I don't get bored of stuff like that. So for me, it's just, I want to go back and enjoy this game. However, I can't quite because it hasn't aged well, you know? Unlike some games which have aged, have aged well, um, some, some haven't, and I would like proper remakes for those ones. But the other reason, this is actually kind of a bigger reason for me personally, as a lore kind of a person, the story's kind of changed over the years. When they first wrote Warcraft 1, uh, when they first wrote Diablo 1, when they first wrote Starcraft 1, they didn't have the whole story arc written out. And as things have gone over time, they have actually had to go back and kind of retcon quite a bit. I mean, if you replayed Warcraft 1 right now, it doesn't fit what's in that book right over there, the Warcraft Chronicles, at all. Like, there's barely any similarity to Warcraft 1, the game, and that freaking book, which actually codifies the lore. Actually having the story as it is now set in stone and, and and ties in more properly and connectively to the sequels and to where we've gone with it is something that I would enjoy. But furthermore, I would enjoy there being an actual story to it. Because Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2, to use two direct examples, didn't really have a lot of story. They had orcs kill and humans defend and that was about it. <laughs> you know? I mean, God's sakes, Deathwing was just a random dragon back in Warcraft 2. Just to name one example of what I'm talking about. So, you know, I, I would like there to be a story in those older games. Uh, anyways, so, moving on for real this time. That would be cool, Deacon, even though it would probably never happen. Um... 
you know what? I don't even feel like this is worth a topic. They, they, they released the Justice League trailer recently. That would be awesome, Hourglass. There is the Justice League trailer, trailer and uh, it looked cool. I mean, I don't actually have much to talk about on it, other than the fact that it was a Justice League trailer. Moving on. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have anything to say about it. I'm still probably going to see it, uh, assuming my friends want to go. Because I don't like to go into theaters alone. And, uh... I mean, I'm kind of looking forward to Wonder Woman. I don't know. I got nothing. Moving on. So here's a fun one for you. For those of you not aware, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 comes out in, a, in like a month and two weeks or something like that from now. Pr relatively recently. And, uh... It actually looks pretty good to me. I mean, I'm actually kind of excited for Pirates 5. Not the least of which being the fact that I am actually quite a bit of a fan of the guy whose name I can never pronounce and therefore will not try, but the guy who's playing the villain. Uh, the guy who's playing the dead man who tells no tales. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go ahead and see it. And they've been uh, releasing more trailers and more information. You know, it overall looks good, but here's the thing I want to bring up. It's not Pirates 5, because Pirate 5 is, you know, great and all. Uh, what I want to bring up is the fact that they're working on a mobile game. They're working on a freaking mobile game for Pirates of the Caribbean. And I had a chance to look at it briefly. You can actually sign up for it right now. I recommend you don't. Uh, when I was doing my deep dive of mobile gaming a couple months back now, I discovered that there's about 7,000 or so mobile games that all follow the same format. I don't know what the proper term is for it. It's build up your base with either through microtransactions or through time, you know, just you can build one thing a day kind of a thing, and then PvP against other people who've built up their bases. You know, there's a Transformers game like that. There's, a, there's like a... a Mobile Strike is that type of a game. You know, it's it's like the default type of of freaking base building PvP mobile game, pseudo MMO. It's garbage. I hate it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think it's garbage. Let me make that statement more clear. Anyways, that's what the new Pirates game is. It's that. Build up your base, PvP against others. It's the it's copy freaking paste. I swear they use the same engine. I swear to God, they use the same goddamn engine in every one of those games, because the Pirates game looks like the exactly freaking same engine. It gets so bad. On some of the mobile games that I've picked up for my little niece, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of ads that will show up, and it's like it's like a tutorial ad for Mobile Strike. Here, do this, and then a tutorial ad will show up for some other unrelated game, which is some fantasy-based thing, and it's the same tutorial. Like instead of a guard tower, it's like a, a stone tower, and instead of like a barracks, it's like a fortress, but it's copy-paste. Literally the same units in the same spot with the same road, it's just all they did was swap the sprites. Anyways, that's the new Pirates mobile game, for anybody curious. You know who you are. Uh, I was asked by Arski just a second ago, do I have any interest in Destiny 2? No! None, zero, zip, zilch. I have absolutely no interest in Destiny 2. If I am paid to look into it, I will look into it, just as I do with everything on my show, but I personally have absolutely no interest whatsoever in Destiny or Destiny 2. <sighs> yeah, it's it's basically an acid flip. It's it's, it's freaking ridiculous. Uh, Timestamp, 24. <sighs> Speaking of Diablo games, uh, they're patching Diablo 3 soon. Uh, I glanced at it here. They're adding uh, the armory stuff. Hey, Leighton Soul. Um, uh, the armory looks kind of cool for Diablo 3. It allows you to basically store, like, sets, which includes gear, let's see, gear, skills, runes, and gems. And you could just click a button and switch between a set for one particular build or another particular build. So that's cool. Uh, they're adding a whole UI feature for crafting materials, so we're going to have a UI screen for crafting materials rather than Crafting materials taking up space in our inventory. About freaking time. Uh, adventure modes getting a few changes. They're changing around how greater rifts work a little bit. Um, they're also doing something that, again, is kind of a about freaking time. They're making it so that rather th so anybody who's done adventure mode in Diablo Three knows you have. It's like okay, what's the bonus right now? Act Three. Okay, so we have to go do all the the stuff in Act Three to get the bonus cash. What instead it's going to be is you just you get a bonus cash for doing all five. Uh, bounties within an act. So you can do the act in any order. If you want to feel and go farm Act 3's bounty, 
you and get the bonus from it, you can just go start a new game, go to Act Three, and do it rather than having to go through the list as the as the bonuses show up. Again, about time. They're adding a whole new tier of of item called Primal Ancients. I'm not going to go into the specifics, uh, but they are better than everything else in the game, and there can of course be Primal set pieces as well. They're ludicrously good gear, gear, like way above and beyond anything they've also had. Now, I wanted to end on that note about uh, primal pieces. Oh, by the way, there is actually a requirement for primal pieces to even drop. I'm gonna, let's see. Uh, you have to have completed at least a level 70 greater rift on the category. Uh, categories are hardcore, non-hardcore, seasonal, and non-seasonal. Anyways, I wanted to end on that note because it brings me to the future of Diablo. So as we all know, we all expected last year they would announce either a Diablo 3 expansion or Diablo 4. They did neither. They announced a patch, which added some new areas, which I believe is live already, and the Necromancer thing, which actually hasn't gone up yet. No news about the future of Diablo itself. And they're still patching in new features to Diablo 3. What are they doing with the Diablo franchise at this point? I mean, I, I, I feel that's a genuine question that should be asked at this point. Are they building towards Diablo 3, the new expansion? Are they building towards a Diablo 4? The mere fact that they're still patching it would, to me, incline the fact that they're trying to release a new expansion for Diablo 3. And they can do that. Here's the thing. Some people argue they can't do that because we're already at the point where even increasing your relative power level by a thousandth of a percent is taking... Sirond Arliss is taking a while. You know, you, you really have to grind your face into, uh... I've never even heard of that latent soul. No, I'm sorry. You have to grind your face in order to actually increase your, your relative power level, you know, as, as things get more and more exponential at the end there. So... Some people have argued that adding in a new expansion doesn't really change or affect that. That's not actually true. First of all, scaling uh, down is, is totally a thing, and in fact, they've already proven that. They did that with Reaper of Souls. In other words, you can just tack on another tier up above that. Second of all, new content, new story, new ideas, new um, mechanics, new functionality, new class. There's still room for an expansion, in my opinion. But the thing is, there hasn't even been a hint or a word of there actually being a new expansion. It's just, they're still patching D3, and we have no idea what they're doing with the franchise. And the really weird thing is, I'm not even sure what would be better at this point. And I have a simple... Yeah, uh, the end of Reaper of Souls ended in typical Blizzard fashion. You know, da-da-da, to be continued. Like, virtually every Blizzard game ever has ended. I think Legacy of the Void is one of the only Blizzard games ever that did not end with to be continue. Uh, so I actually have no idea. And, and Reaper, so Reaper of Souls did end with a clear plot hook for a future sequel. I just don't know what they're going to do with it at this point. I am, I am legitimately and genuinely curious, and I'm curious what you guys think would be better. Do you think they should do a Diablo 4? Or do you think it would be better for them to do Di a new Diablo 3 expansion? What do you think, guys? Which would be better in your opinion, and why, as ever? God, this game looks so damn generic. Not Diablo 3, sorry, I still have the mobile the Pirates mobile thing up. <laughs> yeah, they never did the War in Heaven. They teased the hell out of it. In all the lead-up to Diablo 3, it was like, -da -da -da, they're gonna do the War in Heaven. Even when... If they actually pulled a bait-and-switch, if you're paying attention, as you're going through Heaven in Diablo 3, it's building up to a boss fight with uh, Imperius. I had to think about his name for a second there. And then he just like, nope! We're going to fight Diablo instead. It's like bait and switch right at the end there. Well, see, it's interesting you say that, Golvig, because if you pay attention to the lore of the Diablo series, we, the player characters of Diablo 3, are the first Nephilim. We just happen to be the first Nephilim who are active and functional in the world. Emphasis on the word first. Effectively, everything seems to indicate that there is going to be a new tier of power thanks to the fact that most people who are being born, you know, now and in the last decade, are going to be Nephilim. 
Now, we may still be exceptional amongst Nephilim. We may be above and beyond you know, other people as the player characters of D3. But the point is, Nephilim are going to start becoming commonplace. That's the whole point of why the World Stone was shattered and, and its effect on the world. You know? <laughs> so we've got an issue here. And one that needs to be very... I, I honestly think... This is one of those things where I'd get together people I know and trust into a room and, and close the door and be like, Alright, we need to figure this out. We need to we need to decide where the series is going. I also personally feel that the Diablo series has the same problem that, that we've actually brought up recently. Uh, the Witcher series. See, the Witcher series is called The Witcher series. However, in my blunt opinion, a new Witcher game, Witcher 4, should not star a Witcher. However... It's called the Witcher series. I mean, that's the franchise. That's the branding they're stuck with. So, my reason for bringing that up is the Diablo series is called Diablo. Some of the writers have actually flat out admitted that the main reason Diablo was such a mover and a player in Diablo 3 was because the game is named Diablo 3. Because he suddenly outmaneuvering all of the other uh, lords of hell and suddenly becoming this new uh, avatar of I can't remember how to pronounce the freaking name was done because he's Diablo or she's Diablo if you prefer so we have a little bit of a problem with that too how do we keep Diablo going forward while still having another franchise that makes sense for the lore and the direction we've taken the story it's, it's a problem but anyways I digress um so yeah, I, I don't have any answers right now as to what I'd do with Diablo 4 or Diablo 3.3, I guess, at this point. I, I don't know. I'd have to really think about that. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good question, Corrales. I would like us to not be able to play a Witcher character. I'm, I'm one of those people who personally, just for me, I don't think we need to play a Witcher in the Witcher series, nor do I think Diablo needs to be in the Diablo series. That's just my opinion. However, I know for a fact that's not how most people think. And I guarantee you there would be people who would be either confused or like, huh? If you did that. So, again, it's something that you know, has to be taken into account. Now, there is an option for that. You could start using The Witcher as a subtitle as opposed to a main title, you know. Series Adventures, The Witcher 4 kind of a thing. As opposed to The Witcher 4 Series Adventures. That does sometimes tend to help things. <sighs> uh, anyways, um... And I just use Siri as the example because she's the most common one. I've actually postulated other ideas for main characters we can do other than Siri. Don't worry, Buna Vezabla is definitely not in Diablo 3, I hope. <laughs> um, so I do have one final topic here. I swear Blizzard just comes up so much in my stuff. <laughs> uh... So, um, uh, yeah, strapping the number would help, too. Series Adventures, a Witcher game might help with that. How do I even start? That is a little MMO-y, Deacon, but I can see it. I don't know. So, for those of you not aware, uh, let's talk about metrics. Let's start there. We'll start there. The what, HGC? The one on the PS4? Yeah, of course I did. Um, let's start with metrics. Uh, let me explain what metrics means on the off chance you don't know what that means. Metrics is a measure of measurement. It's what people with regards to business and marketing and executive decisions, officer, managerial, etc. use to try and determine how valuable an action is. Now, it is often misused, and in fact, I am vitriolently against the excessive overuse of metrics when it comes to corporate society, because oftentimes metrics have nothing to do with reality. They'll just slam a metric down and say, you have to accomplish X of Y during this period of time, or else you are underperforming. 
and the metrics people tend to make up for that are frankly ridiculous, in my opinion. There have been so many ridiculous metrics. Um, let me give you a direct example. This is not from me, but a friend of mine. They were working at a call center, uh, like, like not what I was doing, a, a full tilt call center, just a uh, uh, service desk kind of a thing. And they, their metric was they had to conclude, uh, I forget the number, a certain number of calls every hour. Uh, that was their requirement. They had to actually conclude that much every hour or else it's not happening. And uh, that if they were underperforming that, their bosses would take them aside and said, why are you not concluding this many calls? Now, to define what I'm saying here, when I say conclude, I mean hang up on. Doesn't matter if you've actually answered their problem. Doesn't matter if you've actually solved their issue. What matters is if you have hung up on the caller. Now, obviously, they're not directly encouraging you to just start picking up phone and hanging up on people. However, in many cases, what was being encouraged, because they would get in trouble otherwise, is they would start cycling calls around each other. Let me forward you to someone, put them on hold, forward them to someone else in the service center, and hang up on them so that counts for them. And then the other person picks up and says, yes, how can I help you? And, and basically pissing off the customers because they had to meet their metrics, right? So that's an example of how metrics can be misused. I'm sure you can think of a dozen other examples like that uh, in general. The average handling time is another one. I've actually had to run out of that one myself. I hate average handling time. There's also uh, utilization time, which is another one. Making sure that you're properly utilizing all your time. But let's not get into specifics. The point is... There is a valid and reasonable method for which metrics can and should exist, right? Um, and that method is to try... It's to see the heart, the idea of metrics makes sense. The point of a metric is to decide where to put your effort in order to ensure that that effort is properly utilized to make money, right? The problem is life usually isn't that linear. Metrics make sense when you're selling a physical product. Because then you could determine how much of what time and what effect constructs how many products. And then you could decide how much money each product makes. That's very linear. And that's where metrics work best. When you're in a service industry like, oh, I don't know, making YouTube videos and streaming. All of a sudden, metrics become a lot more difficult. And this is where I'm getting to with this. Um, so I have access to a lot of information, actually, when it comes to my show. And... Uh, how it functions, who sees what, how many people see what. But one of the biggest problems I have is, is is metricing my own show and trying to figure out what is useful where. Now, sometimes this is easy. Uh, for example, the Fallout 3 roleplay. The Fallout 3 roleplay was nuked because it was so obviously and apparently underperforming. It was underperforming and wasn't generating a lot of interest, it wasn't generating a lot of views, and it wasn't generating a lot of money directly through Patreon. Ergo, uh, I dropped the, the roleplay feature. The roleplay feature went away and was replaced by the review feature. Oh, for God's sakes, go away. So, the roleplay feature was dropped in favor of the review feature, right? Easy answer, easy choice. It gets a little trickier when it comes to streaming, because the United States, Goldvig, although only by a small margin, it's a simple majority, not an overwhelming majority or a, or a vast majority. Uh, by the way, Bregwin, you can do that for me in the future. Um, so, determining the value of time spent streaming is actually kind of difficult for me to do. And I bring this up because it's kind of a very gray situation. Usually I do the Blizzard Sunday thing on Sundays, right? Now, let me go and explain the three reasons why I do Blizzard Sunday. Reason number one, because I want to. I, because I enjoy doing uh, Blizzard Sunday stuff with you guys. Reason two, because it's a great way to interact with viewers and get viewers to interact with each other. You know, it's the whole co-op thing. We're having fun playing multiplayer games together. And reason three, because it can engage new viewers who are like, hey, here's a streamer who actively plays with his viewers, right? So three separate reasons uh, 
for three separate reasons, there was a legitimate and, and good reason to do the Blizzard Sunday thing. Now, the problem is, I'm not sure the actual value of that, especially since my I, I'm kind of constantly running up against the time wall. And so I have to be very careful with the time I utilize. Uh, I, I have to be very careful with how much time I expend on what with regards to everything, actually, in my life. Uh, my time management skills have certainly gone up in the last few months. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm thinking about... I haven't actually decided yet, but I'm thinking about discontinuing the uh, Multiplayer Sunday, which is what I'm thinking about renaming it to. However... Um, I'm not, I'm not quite decided on that yet, because the problem is this could actually generate real value for the show. Again, it's not really my choice when you really boil down to it. It's not about what I want to do, it's about what I have to do for the show. And I do have, this is my job, and I do have to think about bills and whatnot. Um, and that sucks. But, I don't know what the value is. I have no metric. This is the problem so... This, I mentioned earlier, I started this whole speech by talking about why people abuse and misuse metrics. One of the reasons that became a thing, back in the 90s, here in corporate America, one of the reasons metrics started being abused and misused was because you can't metric everything. However, they had to. The exact same situation I'm in right now. I have to metric my time, but I can't. I'm physically incapable of it, right? So I have, in my case, I'm not going to you know, just artificially assign a metric. I'm just going to guess because that's the best I can do. I have to guess as to the value of, of what I do. So here's what we're going to do for the immediacy. We're going to go ahead and rename Blizzard Sunday into Multiplayer Sunday. If you've been paying attention to my Twitter or Discord or anything else whatsoever, uh, you'll notice there's been a voot that's been up since, like, uh, Tuesday, I want to say. It's right here. I'm actually staring at it right now. Um, for a bunch of games. Mass Effect Andromeda, Civilization VI, Mass Effect Three, StarCraft II, Stellaris, Left 4 Dead 2, Heroes of the Storm, Overwatch, Civilization V, Team Fortress 2, and other, please suggest. Of course, no one gave me suggestions, so other might as well not even exist. The idea being, I'm trying to reach out to everyone saying, if you had time on Sunday and wanted to play a multiplayer game with me and with other viewers, what would you want to play? So that's what I'm going to start doing over the next couple of weeks, and we'll see where that goes. Now we'll see how well that does and see if that succeeds. And of course, I am welcome and open to thoughts, comments for anybody watching the replay of this on YouTube or anybody who is listening right now live on stream. And we'll see where it goes. Um, now, here's the problem. I have to stream on Saturdays and Sundays given my time schedule right now. I cannot record on Saturdays and Sundays, so it's difficult for me to get in good work time on the weekends. So streaming is a natural thing for me to do because I can stream on the weekends. So what would most likely replace Multiplayer Sunday, uh, if it were in fact to be replaced, would be uh, more live rumination stuff. Because that way I could at least stream going through you know, whatever game it is I'm, I'm thinking of next for the rumination, and then having so done, uh, be, be better prepped for actually recording it. You know, Again, efficiency, because at that point I'm, I'm working on a rumination and streaming at the same time. That's the whole point of the live ruminations. <sighs> Anyways... With that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and chop off Lore Week.